it's been the buzz across the world for more than a week now. Yeah. The Chinese balloon paying a visit to America airspace. Yeah, speaking of another popular mm -hmm. destination spot for us, the beach. Yeah. Uh, never one, though, to shun a chance to explain the math behind the science. Mm -hmm. uh, Tony Cavalier is piggybacking on the connection with China with an explainer on the weather of our planet. History in the making last week when an unmanned Chinese spy balloon ventured across American airspace. The week-long journey started in Montana's Big Sky Country and ended at the famous Myrtle Beach Grand Strand. Robin Filipiak of St. Albans had a bird's eye view of the final leg of the balloon's trek. A friend of mine on Facebook, you know, she knows I'm a photographer, so she's like, get that camera up, you know, and see if you can find that balloon or see it. So I went out on my uh, balcony there and I had looked up and Lo and behold, it was right there. I started taking photos, and it started going out over the beach. When the, in the meantime, the crowd was, I mean, gathering on the beach, taking videos. And all of a sudden, there was like four jets, I guess fighter pilots or pilots that came. And all of a sudden, somebody said, and it just blew up. You know, it just, and then when it did, it was so loud. And it just shook. It shook the um, concrete. It that set off uh, car alarms. I mean, it was something that I thought, this is kind of like history, I think, right now, you know? So and we were a part of it, and I cannot believe it just went right over my condo. It was kind of cool. It was kind of scary, too, because you didn't know what was going on with all those planes and the military stuff. So, you know, but that was the day. Everybody was cheering when it, you know, when it blew up. So I love to tie mathematics into physical principles and events. For example, the China balloon caper. Keeping in mind, the balloon came from the Northwest Territories from Alaska up in the northern part of North America, traveled for 10,000 miles before it got to the Atlantic seaboard. And once the balloon flew off of the American mainland, for the first 12 miles, that is American water of the Atlantic Ocean. And it was important for the Air Force to intercept the balloon before it made out its way out over the international waters beyond 12 miles. So here comes the F-22, flying at a height of 55,000 feet, and up at 60,000 feet, 12 miles high, is the China balloon. The F-22 gets in position. Robin was saying she saw it in our Skype interview firsthand, and psh, missile shoots the balloon, which then cascades down into the waters, which are considered American, within 12 miles of the mainland. Now, it was important to get it as close to the seacoast as possible without putting anybody at risk because there's a continental shelf here off the Myrtle Beach Grand Strand and off most of the United States. As you get to the continental shelf, the water below the surface is 47 feet in depth. If you get beyond the continental shelf and then the water goes down markedly, many, many more fathoms, and the bottom line is it's a lot easier to find debris in the 47-foot depth water than it would be in the hundreds of feet water. So the notion of balloon transport is well known in meteorology. It was part of the foundation of modern meteorology. Since the 1930s, we've been releasing balloons up into the atmosphere in order to probe the atmospheric quantities of the air above us. I want you to think of this table as the United States. And twice a day, at 66 locations, including airports, including National Weather Service offices, balloons are raised up into the air. As late as the early 1990s, we actually had a balloon launch twice daily at the Huntington Tri-State Airport. Now Blacksburg, Virginia, and Wilmington, Ohio are the nearest balloon launches. So what we do, we've got these balloons, and we send them up. And what we're trying to do, of course, is to measure wind, temperature, humidity, pressure, as these balloons go up across the world, across our country we have 66, but in the free world there are many more of these. And what these are doing is they're mapping the atmosphere. Each one has a knapsack attached to the balloon, and that knapsack ha houses sophisticated telemetry, which is able to measure temperature, humidity, etc. So twice a day over our country, over our continent, over the world, Balloons are launched, and they're getting us important data, data that we can put into our supercomputers in order to make accurate predictions of the weather. All this information plotted by computer and isopleth, in other words, quantities of equal magnitude are plotted out, 
And in this case, this is the way we determine the jet stream. We get all this data, and it's able to show us rivers of air. Talk to the po people over in California about that atmospheric river pattern of this wintertime, which gave devastating, though beneficial, rains. And the bottom line is all this information from all these balloon launches then is thrown into a computer. It's isopleft, and atmospheric fields are churned out before our very eyes. And these atmospheric fields are then put into the most sophisticated mathematical equations of the laws of physics pertaining to the atmosphere. And then the atmosphere is marched into the future. Six hours, how will things behave? 12 hours, 24 hours, 72 hours, 96 hours. And what you wind up with is a movie. A movie of atmospheric parameters moving across the country, moving across the continent, moving across the world. So in the case of the China balloon caper, coming from Alaska through Big Sky Country and all the way past the Myrtle Beach Grand Strand, the balloon was following the jet stream. And those jet stream winds are really the key. Basically, we thank Robin for the inspiration for Myrtle Beach, the Chinese for releasing a balloon to give us a chance to talk about air currents. And as always, we put it all together in a mathematical topic. And you know something? The only place you're going to see it here at News Channel 3 is right here on Studio 3. Now, Tony says that when he first heard of the size of the balloon, he looked it up, mm -hmm. and it's three London double-decker buses. He said wow, that um, he had suspicion that this would make a good teaching lesson. Yes, yeah, so since the typical weather balloon would fit into a suitcase, Tony says either this was a never-before-witnessed super weather balloon, or as American intelligence has stated, this was some type of suspected surveillance balloon.